Hello everybody, today we're going to make a video about open rails and is it dependent upon train simulator? It's a question that's been asked since the first days, the inception of open rails. Do you have to have Microsoft train simulator installed in order to use open rails? And the answer to that is simply no, you do not, but you do need some things in order for your routes to function within open rails. And as you can see on my desktop, these are the four folders or the four things that you need to have in order to have open rails working on your machine without Microsoft Train Simulator being installed. The first thing is the tsection.dat. This is basically just a f uh, file that keeps track of all the um, global track sections for the different types of track that's out there, your scale rails, your default tracks, and so on and so forth. You need that, and if you don't have Train Simulator installed, you can actually get the latest tsection from trainsim.com. Simply search for tsection and you'll see the standardized global tsection.dat file which is on build 46. Download that and you'll be good to go. So now that you have that you need the global folder which is usually inside the default uh, root directory of train simulator. Just cre create that, call it global. You can uh, then have your shapes. This is where all your track shapes are. This is for your default track shapes. This is for your, what do you call it, uh, DB tracks, US tracks, scale rail. All that is inside of this folder. And as a little fun tidbit, you don't actually have to have these shapes installed to the shapes folder. You can actually install them to the root folder of global. So you can install them right here if you want to, and Open Rails will read them just fine. You can actually move the T section inside of the shapes folder if you wanted to and it'll read it just fine and the T section as you see here in the root folder actually comes from trainsim.com and as you can see there you have it that's where that goes so we're going to keep things just like train simulator would have them and the T section goes in the root folder just like so now the textures folder I actually have the ace clean one in there this is the default track texture that comes with train simulator if you use a route that doesn't use scale rail, doesn't use DB tracks, doesn't use US tracks, and so on, and just use default tracks that came with Train Simulator, you may want to put this in there, but most routes include this particular texture in their texture directory. So this is just like a backup, just in case something goes wrong, it's there. But anything that depends on this global textures uh, that would be used with Train Simulator, you would want to put it here because that's where it would be called on within the game. So it's really dependent on the route that you're using. If the route installs things to the global folder, you want to have that same thing installed to the global folder. But for generic purposes, you just want your generic track shapes and your scale rails and your DB tracks and so forth installed here and you'll be fine. So make sure you have the shapes and at the very least the T section and you'll be good to go. If you don't install the shapes to your track that goes to, uh, with your DB tracks and your scale rails and so forth, you will not have your track inside of open rails. It'll just be blank or uh, you know something like that. So make sure you have your shapes here. The next thing you need is a route folder. So you want to create the routes folder just like inside a train simulator. And in this particular case I have the Pocahontas district. If we go inside of that, of course it's just the route that's been installed by default. So just put your routes in here, any routes that you have, uh, whether it be a streamlines route, whether it be a 3D trains route, whatever, goes in here, and there you have that. And let's just go in here and show the Ace Clean one that I was talking about, because this route by default uses the Ace Clean one, uh, Ace Clean Track one. Now you can see it. So it would not call on the global sh texture in this case because it has its own installed in the textures directory. Next and finally you need your trains. You can't play the game without trains so we gotta have the trains and the train set folder and the consist folder. Consist folder has your consists and the train sets have all your different train sets and you can see here I don't have none of the default Dash 9, SD40, I don't have the uh, GP38s, I don't have the default trains that came with the game, those 16 year old trains. I don't have none of that. I just have the trains that I want to have. And you can see here 
this is a pretty minimal setup here. This is pretty simple. We've got the uh, T section. We have our track shapes and our road shapes. We have our backup textures or any textures that's called upon. And we have our routes folder with all of our routes installed. And we have our trains folder with all of our trains and our consists. Now, one thing that you could add to this is the default sound folder. Inside of Train Simulator, uh, when you install Train Simulator, in the root directory of Train Simulator, there is a folder called Sound. And it's just got these default wheel squeaks. It's got, you know, all these different sounds. Um, you may want to include that in this just in case uh, the route that you're using calls upon some sounds from that. Or some trains in your train set that you may have may call upon uh, default um, wagon sounds. But in this case I didn't include it because it's not a must-have but you would probably most likely want to do that. And the way we would do that is create the sound folder and then we would go inside of it and drag all those train simulator sounds inside of it. Now the reason why I'm not showing you that it's because I don't have Train Simulator installed. So I cannot show you that. That's just that if you want to do it that way. So anyway, now that we have all this, what do we do with these three little folders? Well, you can do whatever you want. You can actually install it anywhere you want to have it. We're going to put it in the Program Files 86. And in my case, I'm going to put it in the Open Rails directory. Just to show you, it doesn't really matter where you have it. So there you go. The three folders are there. Now we fire up Open Rails, and now it's going to ask me, where is your content? Make sure that you click Add. Then we're going to find that particular folder, in this case, the Open Rails directory, and then we click OK. And then we click OK, and you can see up here the installation profile is called Open Rails. And there's the route, the Pocahontas District. There's a my consist that you saw inside the consist folder and we can start anywhere we want and there you have it so let's show one more example let's go ahead and delete that actually and click OK because now let's say James I don't want to install it in the open rail I want to have its own directory okay so we'll just go here and we'll right click and make a new folder and we'll call it I don't know train game train game I don't know whatever you want to call it and then we'll go ahead to train game and then we'll drag those three folders into here and it's as simple as that now whenever you load up open rails <laughs> the funny thing is and make sure you click add and go to C program files and we'll go to train game and click OK and now it's called train game and there's the same thing and there you have it now actually if you don't like that name train game you can actually change it to train simulator if you want to doesn't matter it just gives the profile a name so if you have multiple installations this will help you know which installation that you're using and there you have it that's how you use Open Rails without Microsoft Train Simulator being installed. I hope this video helped. If you've got any questions, just leave a comment below, leave a like, or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It gives me encouragement to make more of these videos when I have time, and we'll see you in the next video.